Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about knowing when we are ready to PR on a big lift. Uh, because this is something that comes up a lot, something people ask me about when I discuss the fact that I don't do the classic lifts unless I know I'm going to PR on them. And it's not a case of me waiting until I think I can PR. We do them when we know we can PR. You guys have seen me do the, the classic squat and the classic deadlift two times each within the last, what, year? Right? Twice. Each. There were PRs both times. And I don't do them outside of that. And I, I think this is something that creates confusion for people because they're like, well, why wouldn't you do them? Can't you just do rep work with these lifts? Can't you do other stuff with these lifts? Like, sure, you could, but there's no advantage to it. There's no advantage. Which sounds crazy to a lot of people, people who do really high specificity, uh, progressive overload type training. It sounds ludicrous. Right? It sounds ludicrous. You're like, well, don't you need to practice them? No, you practice close enough variations, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You don't have to conventional deadlift to walk in and pull 600 pounds. It's not necessary. But we kind of come back at that point of people saying, but there's no harm in it. Well, there may or may not be. But it simply doesn't matter. Because if you're doing other movements that train the movement patterns that you need, and you're building the musculature and the strength and the power, why does it matter? doesn't matter you're going to hit your lifts anyways perfect example you see me doing rep work in the background with a snatch grip deadlift you don't think that carries over doing sets of five with a heavy snatch grip deadlift or you guys see me doing like what sets of five with like 505 on the deficit deadlift that teaches you how to pull from the bottom that's everything that you need That'll teach you how to hit a max deadlift in terms of just the mechanics of it and getting tight and pulling. You know, we could argue with all the different stuff with the box squats on the squat. We could argue about the bench variations. But the, the idea here is the same. We do not have an emotional attachment to these variations. We don't have an emotional attachment. There is no strength standard attached to them. Like you see me do this... Uh, you know, close grip of the buffalo bar. Now, people will say, well, you should be a hair stronger without the buffalo bar because it's slightly harder. Yeah, in theory. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because there is no strength standard for the buffalo bar. Because it is a competition. It is a competition. And anyone who tells you, oh, don't compare yourself to other people, well, that's a loser-ass mentality. I can tell you right now, that's the mantra of the weak and the mediocre, who will never do shit with their life. Don't compare yourself to other people. Um, yeah, that's, that's the sort of people who, who never bother to do anything, because they don't compare themselves to anyone else. They don't care about excelling. Now, when you're the best of the best, you maybe you don't have to do that anymore, right? When you're number one in the world, you can stop comparing yourself to other people. It doesn't matter what the endeavor is, whether it's a business, it can be music, right? I don't know. You'd be the most skilled singer in your genre and be recognized around the world and be making millions and millions of dollars. You can stop comparing yourself at that point. But for everything else, we do compare ourselves to other people, and we should. The downside is that we can get an emotional attachment to those comparisons. So by stepping away from those classic movements, we can be calm, we can be chill. Because I can tell you what messes up any, any of my own lifters when they get psyched up to come in and max out. It ruins them as a lifter. Like I've seen that break, guys. Something I've learned more and more as a coach, I have to make sure my guys understand that. And I, I failed at that as a coach myself a couple times. Because my lifters aren't telling me specifically that they're doing it until after the fact. Right? And that's a problem. 
But, you know, as a coach, I should be asking. It's probably how we assume certain things. That's why there are certain types of clients I won't take on anymore because I don't want to have to ask stupid questions. Right? I will never take another guy who tells me he wants to be aesthetic and wants to cut down ultra lean. I just don't take those clients. I don't want them. I'm not interested. I don't need their money. And go find someone else who will mess them up. Someone else who will make them need psychiatric care. Right? Not my job. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. But back over to the point, we get an emotional attachment. And when we do these variations, we know we're ready to PR. You know, again, a lot of times people look at this and they'll say, well, I don't understand. How could you know based upon chains or bands how much your real lift is? Because you do it a while. Okay. What do I mean? And I'm not saying this is how it works, but it's a pattern you'll figure out. You'll figure out very, very quickly that any time you hit a lift with a hundred pounds of bands for you personally on a box squat or a deadlift or whatever it happens to be then when you do a hundred pounds of bands that you're able to do 60 pounds more of the bar weight next time you do it so so in other words if you hit 400 pounds on that lift with a hundred pounds of band tension you know that your raw max personally is about 60 pounds more than that so instead of being 400, it's probably 460. So if you come in and you hit 420 plus 100 pounds of bands, and you've hit a 20-pound PR, you know based upon your experience that when you come in and test a classic lift, it's going to be up 20 pounds too. It's going to be 480, not 460. It, it, it's that simple. It is that simple. Is it the same for every person? No. Will it be the same for you? Yes. Absolutely. Me personally, I can hit a very, very high percentage of my gap between my, my band and chains. Right? Me, it's at least 60%. So if I have 50 pounds of band or chain tension, I can add at least 30 pounds of straight weight, if not more, to that bar. On most of my lifts. You'll learn that for yourself. You'll get in and learn that for you personally, there's a 10 pound gap between your floor press and your bench press. I actually had someone ask me about that in the comments. Well, what does it mean if my floor press is stronger than my bench press? It means that you need to learn how to bench. Either you are a really, 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 really skinny guy. And when I say that, I mean like you're 110 pounds and have no thickness. Or you just simply do not know how to set up your bench. Right? That's it. But you know when you're ready to PR. Your lifts tell you. I mean, I know as of, of that buffalo bar that my bench is a PR. I can go in and PR my bench anytime I want. In fact, most people would say that counts. Eh, you do a close grip off a buffalo bar, we'll count that. We, we know you can bench at least that much. There's no, there's generally no question about it. Most likely more. So you count it, right? First, you could walk in and do nothing but buffalo bar benching and then walk into a competition and know they're going to hit at least their buffalo bar or higher. These variations tell us a lot. They tell us when we're ready to PR. But the difference is we do not have any sort of emotional attachment to them. Okay, that matters. And again, let's come over to the other point. These are not high skill movements. I'm sorry that is nonsense that's been sold to you by people who sell programming. Powerlifting specific programming. That the classic squat bench and deadlift are really high technique movements that you need to practice, practice, practice. Mm. No, you need to learn basic form on them. You don't need to practice, practice, practice. They're not that technical. They're generally just measures of brute strength. That's why they were picked for powerlifting. Powerlifting is a low skill sport. 
it tests brute strength and brute strength alone. That is all powerlifting tests. Brute strength relative to your body weight. That's it. They're low skill lifts. Again, they were selected for a reason. Because it's a test of strength. They don't want to test other stuff. Which is what a lot of other strength sports do. They test more than one attribute. In this case, it's just raw strength. All right, guys. So that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.